Hey guys, today we're going to be calculating the circumference of the Earth using nothing besides a tape measure, a clock, and a yardstick. Now don't worry, I'm not going to be walking all the way across the world with a tape measure. We're actually going to use the angle of the sun to find out just how big our world is. Now I know that sounds crazy, but nearly 2,000 years ago, Aristosthenes did exactly this. You see, Aristosthenes was a Greek mathematician, geographer, astronomer, and really an all-around smart guy. And he was in charge of the great library of Alexandria in Egypt. Now he knew that on the summer solstice at noon in the city of Aswan, which was further south and on the Tropic of Cancer, the sun was directly overhead and no shadow was cast. However, this was not the case in Alexandria which was about 5,000 stadia, or 575 miles north. In fact, when Aristosthenes went outside with his rod at noon on the summer solstice, he measured a shadow with an angle of 7.2 degrees. But why is this? Well, as you know, or at least should know, the Earth is round and not flat, and it's basically a sphere. So if we shine a light at the equator on this beautiful model of the Earth, we see no shadow on this toothpick. But if we place another toothpick a bit further north, we do see a shadow because the sun is hitting it at an angle. In fact, at the 45th parallel, which is halfway to the pole, we see an angle of 45 degrees, which is one eighth of the circumference. So if we measure the distance between the two points and multiply it by eight, we get our theoretical circumference. And this is exactly what Aristosthenes did. 7.2 degrees is 1 50th of a circle, and 575 miles times 50 equals 28,750 miles, which is pretty close to the now known circumference of 24,901 miles. Only 15% off, which is pretty darn good for 240 BC. But the real question is, can I do any better? Well, before I start taking measurements, I want to talk about one important thing, solar noon. Now, noon is supposed to be the exact middle of the day where the sun is the highest in the sky. However, depending on your location, this time can vary as the sun will rise earlier in the east and thus be highest earlier. But as I'm sure you can imagine, different cities having their own times causes a lot of problems especially with railways and communications. So today, we use time zones to standardize noon in a certain geographical area. However, because of this, 12 o'clock is rarely the actual noon. The real noon is called solar noon, and that is when the sun is the highest in the sky. So to get good measurements, we'll make sure we use solar noon. Hey guys, so right now we are at solar noon, also known as 1237. We have our yardstick perfectly at a 90 degree angle to the ground, and we have a tape measure that we can use to measure the length of the shadow. So we are at zero degrees, we'll hold it up, and I'm getting a shadow length of nine inches. So now let's go back inside and do some math to figure out what this angle is. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate the shadow's angle as 14.5 degrees. Now that's pretty cool, but to measure the circumference of the Earth, we're going to need two spots. So let's go on a trip. Here we are in Central Park in the beautiful New York City where I'm here to film a few TV segments. Now, we are approximately 888 miles north of our previous location and it is solar noon or 1202 and it is time to take our second measurement. So, we'll make sure that our yardstick is exactly 90 degrees parallel to the ground and we can see that we are getting a length of 17 inches. So now let's go home and crunch the numbers to find out just how big our Earth is. 
Using those measurements, we get an angle of 28.2 degrees, meaning we have a difference of 13.7 degrees. 360 divided by 13.7 is 26.3, which means those points are 1 26 the circumference of the Earth apart. So 26.3 times our northerly distance of 888 miles gives us a circumference of 23,354 miles, which is only 1,547 miles less than the actual circumference, meaning we were only off by 6.2%. But now let's talk about why my answer wasn't perfectly accurate and also why my answer was better than Aristosthenes. You see, to calculate this, both Aristosthenes and I had to make a few assumptions. The first is that the Earth is a perfect sphere. And this is not true. The force of the Earth spinning causes the equator to bulge out a bit more than it does at the poles. Now, the next assumption is that the sun's rays are perfectly parallel. The sun emits radiation in all directions. It just seems to be parallel to Earth because all the radiation that hits us has to travel in more or less the same direction. But they're not quite parallel. So that means that we could have a few rays that kind of go in different directions and don't hit perfectly straight. And the next assumptions are perfect measurements. Now, I was trying really hard to hold the yardstick more or less parallel while measuring the length of the shadow with a tape measure, so this is not super scientific. Another issue with my measurement was that I took the measurements one day apart, when ideally they should be done on the same day, or at least the same day of the year, like Aristosthenes did. But the one advantage that I did have over him was Google Maps. <laughs> which gave me perfect uh, distances, or northerly distances, between the two points. Aristosthenes believed that Aswan was exactly 5,000 stadia south of Alexandria, and was perfectly on the Tropic of Cancer. But neither of these were perfectly accurate, so he had, you know, a few more flaws than I did. But regardless, I think it's super cool I could get a pretty accurate measure of the circumference of the Earth using just shadows. And I think it's even cooler that Aristosthenes did it nearly 2,000 years ago. So thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, please leave a like or subscribe. And thanks again to all of my lovely patrons. Thanks.